Hi, One Hour Smart Home here, and today we're going to show you how to add an outlet. So this will work if you have an existing switch or an existing outlet, and you want to extend that to another outlet somewhere in the room. So what we've got here is an existing light switch that's connected to a light. This is a pretty good example of how your typical home circuitry will be wired up. And what we're going to do today is uh, add an outlet by extending wire from this light switch to this new junction box and outlet so that we can get everything set up. So the first thing is that you need to make sure that you have the power off to whatever circuit you're working on. And then you can start working on this. So we've already got the power off. And now what we're gonna do is just take the existing cover plate off and then we're gonna start making the connections and knockouts for this. So let's get started with that. Now we've got the cover plate off and we just need to remove the two screws that hold the existing switch onto the junction box. Now that we have the screws removed, we just need to pull the light switch out of the junction box so we can more easily work on it. We detach the ground wire from the ground screw. Right now is a good time to stop and go ahead and take a picture of the existing light switch. So go ahead and do that. And then we're gonna remove the two wires here once we've got our picture for record and get started getting all the wires and this switch removed. We're gonna to need to extend the wires from this junction box to the new junction box. If you were doing this in your home, you'd typically be doing it behind a wall or maybe you would need to take out some of the drywall so you could do this extension. A lot of times you're gonna be able to fish wires up and down through a wall, but if you're gonna try and fish wires side to side, you either need to go up a floor, down a floor, through either a ceiling space and or a floor space, or you're gonna to need to drill through the studs wherever you are at so that you can get the wires from point A to point B. So now we're gonna just knock out one of these knockouts on the junction box so that we can move the wire from here to here. We're gonna go ahead and take the wire we have and strip off enough of the insulation that it's gonna make it easy enough to work with in this box and in this box. You wanna have more than enough wire because you can always cut it down, but it is hard to pull more wire. So give yourself plenty of extra space when you strip off this insulation, plenty of extra wire because you can always cut it down if you need to. Now that we have the outer insulation sheath off of both ends of the wire, we're gonna go ahead and strip the wires on this hot and on this neutral because it's easier to do when you've got the wire out than when you've got it in the junction box. But if you were doing this inside of a wall, you might as well wait till you pull the cable because it's easier to pull the cable while you've got this sheath on it still and you've got it on a fish tape or another device for pulling the wire. We go ahead and line up the wire with a strip gauge on the back of the outlet that we're gonna install and strip the proper amount for that strip gauge. We strip the wires and then we're gonna secure them into the junction box using a fitting. If you've got plastic junction boxes, you're gonna just knock out the tabs on the bottoms or the sides and route the wire through the tabs. Now that we've got the wires run from point A to point B, we're gonna go ahead and install the new outlet. It's just simple to do that. And when you are installing this in the wall, if you are retrofitting this and you don't have the drywall open, you're gonna to wanna to use a new work box. And what those have is little tabs on them that allow you to cut a small hole that's just slightly bigger than the box, put the box in, and then those tabs will open up and hold this securely in place in the wall. Now, if you have the walls or drywall opened up, you could use an old work box or just a standard junction box and go ahead and secure it to stud, no problem. We've got the wires already stripped, so we're just gonna go ahead and connect them. The ground wire is gonna go on the ground screw up here. And then how an outlet works is you're gonna have a hot wire with incoming power on one side and you're gonna have a neutral wire on the other side. Whenever you have an outlet, you've gotta have both a hot and a neutral wire. So the hot is the incoming current and the neutral wire is the path for that current to return to your electrical panel. 
So on the back side of the outlet, typically it is marked where the hot wire will go and where the white wire or the neutral wire will go. So you can see it says hot wire over here and it says neutral wire here. It also has the strip gauge on the back so that you know how far to strip the wire and you can go and hook, go ahead and hook the wires around each of these terminals. Now, something that is unique is that on an outlet, they have this little tab here and there's another tab over here. The reason for that tab is if you wanna create a switched outlet. We're not gonna do that in this video, but basically what you do is you create one side where the power is always on, and then you have this other side where you break the tab off here, and you can add this to a switch, and then you could have a switched outlet. And some people do that if they're gonna plug in a lamp where they wanna be able to turn it off on a light switch. We're not gonna do that in this video. We're just gonna go ahead and install it just like a normal outlet if you wanted to provide power to it. We stripped the wires and created the hooks on the back so we can secure them to the terminals on the back of the outlet. One side is going to take the neutral wire and the other side is going to take the hot wire, which will be indicated on the back of the outlet. Once we secure the terminals with the screwdriver, we can continue on to securing the hot wire to the terminal on the other side of the outlet it's really important that you pay attention to the indications on the back of the outlet to make sure that you get the right wires in the right place. The hot wire on the right terminals and the neutral wire on the right terminals. The reason being is that you want to have the correct polarity for any devices that are plugged into the outlet that require a specific polarity for proper operation. Now we wire and secure the ground wire to the terminal. We've got the ground wire secured, the neutral wire secured, and the hot wire secured. What I like to do whenever I'm working with an electrical outlet or a light switch is take electrical tape and cover up these terminals just so that they don't come into contact with the metal junction box or any of the wiring inside of there just as an added measure of precaution. Now that we have the electrical tape on there, we can go ahead and install the outlet into the junction box. We secure the two screws that hold the outlet into a junction box using a screwdriver. Now that we have the outlet installed in the new junction box, we can go ahead and put the cover on. Now we need to reinstall the old switch into the existing junction box. So for this, since we have multiple wires, we're gonna to need to make sure that we really pay attention to what we do here. What we've got going on is a whole bunch of wires going into one box. So we've gotta sort all that out, okay? So we've got the ground wire over here. We have our hot wires here in black and we have our neutral wire way in the back. So the easiest one to connect is just get this new neutral wire connected to the existing neutral wire. So we're gonna get that out here and get that one connected. Now we've got our neutral wires connected, so we're gonna push that back into the junction box here. Let's go ahead and take care of the ground wire next, which this is this unshielded copper wire here, but most of you will probably have a insulated green wire. So we'll take this existing wire nut off and replace it with a new one. Now, I'm going back with a red wire nut because each different color of wire nut represents different sizes and a red wire nut is better suited to fit four of these 14 gauge wires inside of it than this yellow wire nut. You'll look on the back of the box that uh, wire nuts come in or the bag and it'll show you the sizes that you're supposed to use for the number of wires and gauge of wires that you are using in your electrical system. Now, most home electrical systems are either 12 or 14 gauge. So now it's time to install the light switch with the remaining wires. What we've got is the incoming hot wire here that comes from the circuit and the circuit breaker down below in the house. And we've got our outgoing load wire that goes to this light fixture here and we've got our outgoing hot power that's gonna provide power to this new outlet that we wired up. Now, when I started to replace this switch with the existing switch, I actually had a couple issues. 
This wire had broken off because I've taken it in and out so many times for demonstration videos. And this switch, the bottom threads on this screw actually started to strip out. So we're just gonna replace it with a new light switch here and install that instead of this old one because it's worn out. Now, most of you won't have that problem, but if you've had a lot of renovations done or circuitry work, you can certainly run into an issue where the existing switch, the threads will start to strip out. So just be mindful of that because you wanna get a good tight fit on this when we're gonna put two wires in the back here versus the one on a hook. You really need a firm, tight grip so those wires don't slip out when you put the switch back into place. So that's why we're gonna install this new light switch here, but uh, functions just like the old one. So, we go ahead and we take our two hot wires, the one that's outgoing to this outlet and the one that's incoming, and we're gonna put them on the bottom terminal on this new light switch, and then we're gonna secure it down. You wanna make sure you hold them in place so that you get really good contact in there because having good contact with the wires and the light switch prevents overheating when there's a lot of load on this. So you wanna make sure that you have those in really tight and that you've got good contact with both of those wires so that they don't slip out. Now we're gonna take our remaining wire, which is the load wire going up to this light fixture, and we're gonna install it in the back of this one here. All right, so we've got that secured to the switch. The only remaining thing we have is this ground wire, which we're gonna to secure to the ground screw, which is on the top of this light switch back here. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on video, but we'll try and get it in there. There we go. All right, now that we've got all the wires secured, we're gonna go ahead and take our electrical tape and wrap once all the way around this light switch just to make sure we've got an added layer of protection for that wiring and that no contact is made with other wires within the box. You can see the electrical tape covers up the terminals and everything is nice and secure. So we're gonna push this back down into the junction box. Now we're gonna take our two screws and secure the light switch to the junction box. Now we're ready to put on the cover and after that we can turn the power on. Now we're ready to turn the power on, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. With the power restored, we can check and make sure that the switch is functioning, and it is. And we've got something here. This is an Echo Flex to test and make sure that this outlet is working. So let's plug it in and see if it lights up. I can already see the blue light turning on here, so this is working perfectly. That is how you wire an outlet with an existing switch or if you wanted to extend an outlet from an existing outlet, you could do it the same way. So if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you wanna support us, click on any links below or sign up for our email list or buy us a coffee. But most of all, please subscribe because that really does help this channel. So thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.